That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. No tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Very well learned here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to MOT and presents Random Select, that is Masters of the Nerdiverse X Random Select, where we take some of pop culture's biggest fighters and pit them against each other until only one standing at the end with the head of its begotten brethren. I am, of course, your host, Mike G, and with me, as always, is the host with the most, the man who has more buddy than he has toast, which is Trash Monk the Third. What's up, everybody? This is Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk I, 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 and I'm coming at you from the trash bunker with the trash computer, and I have my phone up. This has been an idea, and guess what, folks? I have it on my phone. Get ready for some mad drops as I use the soundboard. Yeah, picture several drops like that, folks, throughout the episode. If you're going to do those drops, make it a little bit louder, my man. For those in the back, my dude. Just a tad louder. If, if we're going to be subjected to these. Okay. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And with us is the man himself, the dude who only carries three blades at once. Brian, what's going on, man? Hey, thanks for having me. It's uh, finals night, random select, knife fight. I'm here for it. Sword duels, Doug. Two two rapiers clashing in the moonlight, dude. Can't you imagine, like, somewhere throughout throughout time that two, like, like, Spanish fencers were standing on top of a gondola fighting on the moonlight? And for real, like, someone was going to die that night? That Look, had, man. That had to have they, happened at some point in history. They just discovered parallel universes. We all knew they existed, but now they've discovered it, discovered them, even though NASA, you know, says they don't exist. I would expect nothing less. But with parallel universes, bro, anything is possible. Dude, the, <laughs> there's a version of MLTN where it's just three aardvarks, and they're, they're in human form. And they're talking about their aardvark lives. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And I'm for it. I'm a thousand percent for it. I'm Dude, Advark too. I'm, I am plus on Advark. Negative on Squirrel. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> let's roll up three Advarks and like send them on an RPG campaign. That's got to be, that's got to be something, right? Dude, at the last minute you throw an aardvark at the Lich King and he just buckles under it, the weight of its power. The Lich King is like, how did you know my weakness? And the Aardvark is like, like do Aardvarks make noise? Does it go grrr or something? I don't even know. I don't even know. But I'm about to say that the Aardvark's like, dude, I'm an Aardvark. It just, like, I'm an Aardvark. Check me out. <laughs> I got this little super long tongue, dude. Well, I'm going to throw it up your nose and give you a COVID test. Yeah. Uh, school. <laughs> That's you, great. You are negative and you just pass out from the. The sheer sensation of aardvark tongue going into your brain. I need healing. I need, that's what the aardvark says after it hits the <laughs> uh, the Lich King. We're in the final round. We've been the the tale of the random select has reached its climax, has reached its end, and in our final round, we'll be talking about 1974's own Young Frankenstein versus 1984's own Ghostbusters. This is going to be a fight for the ages. Absolutely, man. Comedy. Uh, you're talking about two classic films as it stands, not made too long away from each other. And, you know, two completely different tones. But as I said, if it's going to be a knife fight, and it's definitely going to be a hashtag hard cut type of knife, uh, I am here for it. Dude, isn't it refreshing that uh, both of these films have like scenes that some people have tried to make go like there? This is uncomfortable for a 2020 audience, and now it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's like we're able to. Apparently, it hasn't. Yeah, you, know? you know, apparently it I is not. 
you know? Actually write a note, but because you bring that up, it kind of like brings me to one of my points. I just don't want to forget it because yeah, it's, it's, it's something about those, those remakes, isn't it? <laughs> Could it? Couldn't it be that we've just grown that sensitive that these jokes still land, but you know, given PC cancel culture that a I lot of these things have become more. problems yeah. where there is none, maybe there. You know, like, you, you can hide. You can always hide in the shadow of a doubt. Honestly, I've always been a PC type of guy. Hey, mm-hmm. what? But at the end of the day, like at some point, you know, when a comic can't get up and and do comedy without people literally getting offended, it's like, well, I mean, it's comedy. Someone's not gonna like it. You know what I mean? That's, and it's like, yeah, we're. Yeah. we're Folks, where have we gone? <laughs> it's one of those things where, yeah. com- you know, even going back to kings and jesters, right? The jester is there to balance out the hubris of the king. The jester is there to make jokes about things the king is uncomfortable about talking about, right? Correct. Or uncomfortable accepting. What is comedy? Comedy is to make you laugh and sometimes it talks about things that make you uncomfortable. Dave Chappelle's first skit on the Chappelle show is right. He was a he was a African American KKK member, <laughs> a blind right? African American KKK member. <laughs> like that's gonna upset a lot of people. But was it funny? Dave made it funny. You know, uh, it's it's cross culture. You know, certain things aren't gonna always be appealing to everyone, right? and that's kind of the point. You know, some folks aren't worried about being PC, and I appreciate that about the world. In to an extent, to an extent, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> to an extent. I mean, there's always lines to cross, dude. Okay. There's always lines <laughs> to, to cross. To an extent. I mean, so I will, I will leave it at that. But uh, winner, you know, what is comedy? And as you talk about so often when we speak about movies or films or whatever, mm-hmm. be in general, it's, it's the classroom. And if you've been, ever been in any type of theater class that is always a question what is comedy man and right i mean there's a who's the russian comedian i believe he's the one that has done work on this uh he goes car you don't drive car car drives you yeah in soviet (laughs) russia car drives you yeah yeah so he's actually a professor (laughs) at a research uh, university studying like comedy and laughter and he pretty much describes it as comedy. It's like uh, the it's like there's the joke, and the human mind is expecting uh, like uh, an outcome from that. And then the punchline is flipping it and like putting you in a, a direction that you weren't expecting. And that describe and that produces in your brain um, a laughter because you like I don't understand it <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Yakov is genius, bro. Yeah. And and that's one thing I I love about comedy and horror is that it's a knee jerk reaction. Right? They're both knee jerk reactions. They're both mm-hmm. you know, if something's funny, if it's funny to you, you're going to laugh. You know what I mean? Like it's going to get that out of you. If something's scary, you're gonna get jolted. You know, but if it's not funny, you know it's not funny because you're not laughing. You know what I mean? It's this it's this, you know, biological re- reflex <laughs> of <laughs> of viewing events or hearing events, you know. But you say that, but is there peer pressure when it comes to things that are funny? Shut it down. <laughs> I, don't, like, I, don't, look, I don't like the laugh. I don't like the laugh. And people all the time, dude, it's funny. Look at this. It's funny. Watch this. It's funny. Guess what, man? I'm not laughing. You know, and the thing is, is that. It, 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 but not to be an a hole, <laughs> you're like. Yeah, there is a pressure to it. There's a pressure to anything. Like, but you've never seen Bad Boys Two. Your your friend sits you down and makes you watch it. They're looking at you to see the gauge your reaction. Yeah, and it's it's a social test, right? And if it's not funny or not good to you, then you people fake it, and it's obvious unless you're just a good liar. You know what I mean? Right. You can't you can't fake that. You can't fake genuine laughter. Well, hold, let's hold on to remind. If I forget and I ask, remind me. Just say Pete Holmes. But before we go on to that, uh, yeah. So like uh, finding avenues that like we're not expecting is the punchline. I feel like 
like therefore comedy always has to kind of be on the edge or have something going on and that's why their films will have like controversial bits in comedy because it's like that's that is an avenue comedians explore to get that like joke you know like oh we're not like there's some comedians that their form of surprise is by how witty the joke is like a like a Seinfeld maybe or uh um uh, like Roy slapstick Skull. comedy you know or yeah slapstick comedy it's like look how ridiculous this is i wasn't expecting i wasn't expecting uh peter griffin to talk about a dinosaur on roller skates yeah that but, squirrel can water ski right yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the squirrels they actually can water ski that's what i'm saying they might be glued into the skis but they can Jesus. water ski <laughs> but yeah i think one thing I've learned from this random. Oh wait, 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 Pete Holmes, Pete Holmes, Pete Holmes, Pete Holmes. Yeah, uh, oh, Pete, oh, uh, oh, Pete oh. Holmes talks about like research that they've done on like fake laughter, and uh, there's like uh, they've done ones where people actually laugh, and then people that fake laugh, and then if you slow it down, it sounds like chimpanzees when they are really laughing, like <gasps> like that type of stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then when people fake laugh, it's ho ho it's like a gut reaction of like what's going on with him <laughs> yeah. yeah are you well, okay having been in some acting classes like they literally teach you to fake laugh by using the word ha and it just comes from the belly and you just repeat it over and over again almost till it's like one long ha and you know I don't know how effective it is because I'm not a comedian and I don't like to laugh. So as you can tell, I probably flunked that part, but Hey, it's funny. Exactly. Winner. Exactly. (laughs) To quote the Joker. Ha ha ha. So it's time to get into the nitty gritty of this. And I think we should open up this uh, battle. The end of this battle Royale. This is Duran versus Goku for my nizzards with, Young Frankenstein, nineteen seventy four. Nineteen seventy four. We're going back in time. But we're going back in time. Wow, wow. With Mel Brooks, with Gene Wilder plugging into the his dial up internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? With so yeah. many, with the ensemble cast, jokes by the minute, a pure comedy. You know what I mean? A pure great, com- writer. great masterful writing. Great timing, great, just a lot of good ideas are in this movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they're executed beautifully. Technically, it is a very, very well made movie for to be a Frankenstein movie. I mean, for its time, you you know know what I mean? That's 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 a pretty big compliment. You can't get more tired than the Universal movie monsters, right? You can't get more tired than Dracula, than the mummy, than Frankenstein. And at the time, they were tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in 1974, right. the the concept of Frankenstein was literally, no pun intended, dead. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. A fun fact that they reused bits of the Frankenstein set for this movie. I love that. That's what uh, the laboratory. I don't think it's the laboratory, is it? Um, that's as far laboratory. Uh, uh, that's as far as I got with my research. Fine, that they just used. <laughs> You know, I believe it. Um, Mel Brooks was, if anything, was a professional, and he was very meticulous. And I can tell in his comedy, it's almost pinpoint accurate. You know, line delivery, and almost like you feel like they've done those takes five or six times because mm-hmm. they're because at some points they're so deadpan, at some points they're so wacky that you know you know you got to make sure that you get the proper energy for that joke to to make the joke to make the yucks bigger. You know what I mean? Uh, there's so many quotable moments in this movie. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Uh, Brian, I, you being uh, the Batman who does not laugh. Um, what What's your big takeaway from Young Frankenstein in 2020? My big takeaway from Young Frankenstein in 2020 is that you can take... Look, you can take a very old idea i don't how old is is mary shelley's frankenstein 18 something seven i'm i'm gonna go 
Jesus. 1700s? 17, 1800s, something like that. Okay. And, you know, it's 2020, and this was my first time watching Mike, this. could you look that up for us? Sure, why not? And uh, this was my first... This was my first time <laughs> watching the film. And it translated very well. Like, I, I enjoyed... I enjoyed what I watched. I found it funny. Honest to God, I will probably be saying Igor and Frankenstein for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, I've never heard it before. And that's what I mean by, you know, such a old concept is still fresh in 2020. And, you know, I've seen a ton of movies. I've seen Frankenstein. I've kind of read the book Frankenstein. Don't don't ask me any questions about it. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein's first known appearance was in 1823. Yeah, 1820. It's an old, old concept. Old mm-hmm. concept written by a young girl who was trying to scare her friends at a sleepover. Isn't that nutty? And it just she just really? expanded it. Yeah, the story of Frankenstein is that Mary Shelley was um, at a sleepover with a bunch of her young friends. She wrote this when she was like a kid. Uh, she was like in her like a teenager, or, like in her early twenties or something like that, and they were trying to scare each other. And she so she just came up with this idea of the modern day Prometheus, you know, the old you know Greek tale, and um, thus was born Frankenstein. And she just wrote out the whole book right after that night. And who would, I... who would have known it became this modern day folklore? I am a complete waste of a brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Complete <laughs> waste of the like, <laughs> like, okay. You know, like I am a complete waste of a brain. So, you know, on that note, I will say it was funny. It's classic. Um, I'm glad I finally saw it. Um, um Yeah, and and you know, in the Pantheon, not the use winner's word but in the pantheon of comic movies like yeah i can see why why this is spoke about and and a thing uh winter this being one of your self-stated favorite comedies of all time Mm -hmm. where do you find yourself with this movie in 2020 oh um i i find myself like wanting to i there's a, a few movies that I would actually watch the special features on, like the making of, and this would be one of them just to see like the production, um, see if there's like anything that they left on the cutting room floor on this. That would be interesting to watch or, like scenes that didn't quite make it. Cause there's gotta be like a couple where they're just riffing constantly. Like I try, uh, so the scene that we picked today, I tried to find the, uh, uh, the monk scene in the script so i yep. just typed in espresso and that didn't come up that line so uh that was must have been added later on or on scene um wow i brought espresso i have espresso but i have espresso yeah, yeah. um and it's just stuff like that and it's a film that you can keep going back to and like okay now i'm gonna look at each joke okay now i'm gonna look at production now i'm gonna look at like jokes that they have in the background type thing yeah the jokes that aren't apparent yeah. you know what i mean the sight gags not, yeah, yeah. And it's not just like one type of joke over and over again there's jokes that break the fourth wall there's jokes that uh are like uh letting you in on the show busyness of hollywood which is common for mel brooks films there's Pratt falls yeah there's, there's a musical in the middle of it like yeah it's, it's it's too much dude i enjoy uh, I haven't seen this movie since I was a kid. I honestly didn't remember not one bit of it other than what memes have kind of became over the years, put it on the Ritz, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Watching it with fresh eyes in 2020, it's one of those, it became one of those movies that I just wanted to just talk to people about. Like finding myself like with family, like, hey, you guys want to watch uh, Young Frankenstein? <laughs> we recently watched this and no, Michael, we don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Young Frankenstein. No, it's really good though. It's really, it's really neat. I think you know, it's one of those movies that I just fell in love with after watching it, because um, it it stole my attention. I mean, you know, watching some of these uh, random selects, I would be do- doing something else like drawing or writing show notes, and this commanded my attention from the jump. You know, from that from the opening um, 
uh, you know, college scene where he's teaching in the class. I was locked in. You know, they paid that guy two dollars to pretty much shatter his his knee. <laughs> you know what oh I mean? God! I when love he that. Sticks that knife in his leg, man. That's yeah. just. Great. He's like, give him another dollar. <laughs> you know? that's just great. The old guy's like, oh no, you know, like, and, and it just doesn't stop all the way to the end of the movie. Uh, uh, Frankenstein climbing in the face of the castle. He's like, no, no, let him be wants to do it on his own. He seems struggling. <laughs> 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 I was just rolling, dude. Like so stupid. It, it, it's it's a pure comedy. It's a true comedy, um, given that it does have uh, science fiction undertones. They are not the star of the show. It's kind of used as a springboard to the comedy. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really think that Frankenstein was like they were trying to do anything other than a comedy here. You know yeah. what I mean? As as many of the movies that we've watched have been action or drama or romance comedies. Right. Case may be. This is very much a pure comedy. Yeah, and you know, the same when I discovered this film, it was uh after I discovered Steve Martin's A Man with Two Brains. So they're kind of like in the same like childhood memories <laughs> of uh two brain based films <laughs> two comedies yeah the man with two brains dude yeah dude. i have not seen that steve martin movie is that oh, the one that's... is that the one with the black guy has the the old white dude on his on his on his shoulder no this is the i don't remember that scene this is the one <laughs> where <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a movie. No, someone knows what I'm talking about. There's a weird comedy horror movie where this old big refrigerator Jones looking dude has like an old white millionaire head attached to his body. They're they're walking around like like a two headed centaur and they're arguing with each other and having racial banter. I don't know what that movie's called. It's like some... <laughs> Thank you, Winner. I'm happy You're that welcome. it was actually censored. Even though we cuss like sailors. I don't know why. That made me happy. It's like, oh, it's a censored version. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is the one where Steve Martin is like a brain doctor. And uh, <laughs> he's like, there's a scene where he's in the in the like operating room. There's like a cat sound. Like, get that cat out of here. And, he, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty pretty funny and there's like a brain bandit that's running around and he like unscrews a person's head open and there's like just a bunch of oranges that fall out and i think he goes uh, like that's not normal well, that, well that's not normal i love steve martin i can we can do a whole random select just on steve martin movies and i think it would be enough of his i mean i could I, I don't man there's a couple of good ones there that i just don't know what's my favorite steve martin movie that is that, just a very long thought. Dude, <laughs> with that, I think Young Frankenstein oh. is possibly one of the best comic comedies ever. It's, it's a, if you, you can argue it, right? Yeah, I think it, it would be in the AFI top 25. Top 25. Maybe the top 10. Ooh, maybe top 10. I would, uh, and that's weird because we've I've, we've said before that this isn't Mel Brooks' best movie, but it's either no, it, it fights between number I one and number it. two. I said it. I said well, it. you said it because this you, you have a little bit of nostalgia bias, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You grew up with it, man. Of course, you're gonna love it. Oh, uncivilized. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You guys ready for some masterpiece theater? Yeah. Um, they have it ranked 13 in their comedy. Oh, you beat me to it. I had to look because that's a bold statement that you made. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't far off. It is on the kitty corner, um, is or not kitty corner, but next to it at number 63, which is just side by side of my computer. Um, Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop. One of our other films <laughs> well, that didn't quite make it. Well, you know, we're I think we're we're pretty smart guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they have I the think... producers higher than Young Frankenstein, which I think is interesting. Well, don't go ruining it for everybody, they... but go check it out. <laughs> AFI's, you know, American Film Institute's top hundred list. This is great. Get that really big uh, extent uh, external hard drive and just load them, load it up, load it up. Ready to do some Young Frankenstein? This is where the fun begins. 
Oh, you! Oh, the prequels. Get him out of this episode. Get the prequels out of here, dude. Wait, play that again. This is where the fun begins. That's what, what Anakin says, right? But when he jumps into the Jedi fighter, dude. Was that Anakin? That, that was so- Anakin from. Uh, that was. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. Apparently not. That was Anakin from. Uh, I want to wow. say, uh, Revenge of the Sith. All right. Don't worry, we we have Star Wars coming. Maybe Winter will drop in with his uh, sound effects. What uh, what scene of Star Wars is this from? All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. That's not Star Wars, my good sir. That's that's Grand Theft Auto. That's Car Wars. (laughs) (laughs) Grand Theft Auto Three. That's Car Wars Three. Attack of the Spliff. (laughs) San Andreas is one of the best games ever made, man. Somebody give me credit. That was good, damn it. Uh, I can't, you guys. I can't. Masterpiece. Do we have a masterpiece theater? Yes, yes. We are enacting a scene out of Young Frankenstein. You didn't Uh, put up a a little sound bit for that? um, All right. Uh, no we are enacting a scene of Young Frank <laughs> where uh, Mike G will be doing the sound effects or the the scene, <laughs> and oh, uh, oh. and um, the monster will be played by yours truly, Winter Trashmuck the Third, and Elizabeth will be played by the one and only Brian. I want to, I want a girly voice from you, Brian. I don't want you just Absolutely. deadpanning this one. All right, there is not a deadpanning. Man. Deadpanning. Dead pet. No, no. I was messing Never. with you. So All let over. us venture All into Transylvania in a time not so far away in the Young Frankenstein universe. Curtain opens. I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, Elizabeth and the monster are lying on a bed of leaves. Penny for your thoughts? The monster's eyes twinkle Levaciously. You're incorrigible, aren't you? Mm. All right, then. Seven's always been my lucky number. They are about to kiss when suddenly the monster's ears perk up as he hears the eerie Transylvanian lullaby. He doesn't know where it's coming from. What, dear? What is it? The monster gives a pathetic cry. Is it that music? Mm. Mm. Probably just some nearby cottage. Nothing to worry about. The monster gets up and starts out of the cave, pulled by forces he doesn't understand. Where are you going? They've left their FM station on. That's all. He's gone. Scene. I love it. Perfect closing. Yeah. We can end the podcast now. <laughs> no, nah, man. That's not how this goes. No, man. We're nah, in man. a back alley somewhere, man. Like, you pull out your knife, I get to pull out mine. What do you nah, talk man. I love this that. Isn't, this isn't you pull out your knife and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just walk away then. Ladies and gentlemen, if someone pulls out a knife, don't fight them. We just have run, to- dog. It's called a tactical retreat. Tactical retreat. Remember Serpentine. Uh, If that's a knife, I think our next contestant says that's not a knife. This is a knife. 1984's own Ghostbusters, dude. What you're going to call Bustin Makes Me Feel Good. What? So this movie (laughs) stars (laughs) Bill Murray. Uh, directed by Ivan Reitman, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, 1984's own Ghostbusters, directed by Ivan Reitman, starring Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, Sigourney Weaver, Rick Moranis, what more do you want? That Peck dude, I don't know who, what actor he was, or it's is. Gregory. It wasn't Gregory Peck, that'd be awesome. 
Dude, that would have been awesome. Gregory Peck would have probably real life slapped somebody on set. He would have been like, I am tired. You're making me do this ghost movie? Do I have to put the marshmallows on my body? William Atherton. William Atherton. Pecker. Is that the dude that was in uh, The Fly that he got his his leg melted off by Brundlefly? They look very much alike. Ooh. You know what I'm talking about? God, I love the fly. Where, is... Remember when Brundlefly acid vomited on that dude's leg and it just nuked yeah, it? Yeah, man. Freaking hey. Um, we got to do an MLTM reviews the fry, dude. The fly. Dude. I, I actually meant to bring that up to freaking you because that is something I would do. I freaking right. love the fly. Pencil that in, dude. Anywho. <laughs> All right. No, he's not on. No credits there. Anyway. All right, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Ghostbusters. Um. Uh, I would say a pop culture icon, uh, unavoidable in the 80s, unavoidable in the 90s, even unavoidable in the early 2000s. Ghostbusters has been around Mm -hmm. since its exception on one way or another, good or bad. It's probably one of the most original screenplays I bet anyone has ever read. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like like that idea is, is, you got to be stir crazy, man. It's, It's Frankenstein levels of ingenuity. It is, and you know, as I was thinking about this this knife fight that we have, I was like, oh, there's never been a remake of Ghostbusters. It's original. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I haven't seen it, so I don't know, but... It's not it's- as bad as people say it is. It's just bad. You know? <laughs> what, what was your sound effect there, Runner? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how the earth feels about that movie. But it is an original idea. And as I was thinking about this film, I was thinking how much compared to Frankenstein of an original idea it is. Frankenstein's been around since 1800s. We still have yet, at least, you know, on, on film to anybody to do this idea, not mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. I would. There's films yeah. about ghost but there's not films about busting ghost i would say that <laughs> hold on, i already, hold on. already made the joke so i can't make it twice already... okay okay so i would say <laughs> <laughs> i would say that ghostbusters is the grandfather for such things as ghost hunters you know what i mean like those reality shows where guys go to like Alcatraz and try to talk mess to ghosts to get some kind of paranormal reading. And nice. actually, since we've watched this film, I actually, because I was never a big fan of those shows because, you know, why am I going to watch it? I believe it's fake. Not ghosts are fake, just the, the show is fake. So at any rate, why am I going to watch it? But I was thinking about that, right? But no one's trying to bust a ghost. No one is trying to capture a ghost. They're just like, hey, can we hear it or film it? These dudes were like, nah, we're going to capture ghosts. This is a business idea. And you got to think about it like there is no precedent that ghosts even existed at that point, right? There was no precedent. It was so grounded in reality. When this movie, you know, what do you mean by there's no precedent? Like, this poltergeist. I'm, I, I, I'm. I mean, I'm talking about like in the Ghostbusters universe, right? Which is oh, 1980, okay. early 1980s in New York City, New York City okay. back then. There were, you know, ghosts weren't proven to be real. There weren't real ghosts for real. I feel like you're you're still saying that there was no idea concept of a ghost. Outside no, of ghost. no, the, the concept of ghost was in Ghostbusters, but the proof that ghosts were real. Has never been proven, never been caught on camera. Are you, are you talking about the Ghostbusters universe or like uh, in reality? No, the Ghostbusters universe. <laughs> okay. The Ghostbusters universe, ghosts were 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 figments of people's imagination. They were folklore, yes. right? Okay. Gotcha. They were, they were yeah. cryptids, right? In character. Yeah. Gotcha. In character. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Right, so LARPing. they were gotcha. larping these ghosts. So right. when when. Mm-hmm. Peter Venkman says, okay, dude, put up your house, put up your car, put up everything so we can we can bank on this on this bet that doesn't exist. That's such a gamble. Like, can you imagine asking someone in real life, all right, Brian, um, we're going to open up a business where we make pizzas made out of ectoplasm. 
We're gonna no man. Se- you know, sell everything you own. We, I know ectoplasm not it doesn't exist yet, but we're gonna find it. Me and Absolutely. you are gonna find it. Selling ectoplasm pizza. Ectopla- ecto pizza. We, we take the ectoplasm and mix it in with the tomato sauce. Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. But I'm just saying that the movie starts, you know, outside of the opening scene where you nope. actually see a go- <laughs> dude. I was so I was praising you on your on your clean on your clean sound edits, and now here, look at you. <laughs> Disgraceful! I clicked on the Ramsey button. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You never click on the Ramsey button. You're gonna get something you don't want. It's raw. You're gonna. Get, I hope you like it raw. Um, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters <laughs> is a very good movie. You try to power through your clips. <laughs> They're just too strong. Uh, Brian, do you think? That Ghostbusters, if they did a legit remake, if, another legit remake, I mean, do you think that Ghostbusters Afterlife, that movie that just disappeared from the face of the earth, uh, do you think it would be good? Do you think Ghostbusters is that kind of property? Like, don't touch it, just <sighs> let it disappeared? be. I think that, and I have not seen the new Ghostbusters, so don't at tweet me. I don't know. But I think that you could give this idea a couple of go rounds. Frankenstein, we've seen redone a in million times in clay, in puppets, Video all, games. but we have not seen a proton pack. <laughs> Word, you know right? I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like if, if someone wanted to dip their toe in the Ghostbusters and expand on this world and build it out. It not not Marvel, folks. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking Marvel about, shared universe. <laughs> yeah, no, we do not need a Ghostbusters shared universe. Shared so. universe? Shared universe? No, we don't need that. But if they wanted to mm-hmm. expand out the world and dig a tad bit deeper than what they did in Ghostbusters Two and Afterlife. I'm I'm here for that, man. I'm here. And hearing Paul Rudd was in there, I was actually excited because Paul Rudd is one of the few comedians. I like his sense of humor. It's dry. That's what I get. So um I've always wanted like a Ghostbusters Incorporated where they're they've grown into a conglomerate and there's Ghostbusters sites all over the world. You know what I mean? Expand just, on the expand, universe a little expand bit. Expand it, right? Like, I mean, how far can they go? Like, can they go Ghostbusters LA? And then dude, it's like... Ghostbusters how UK. They, how far can it go? Ghostbusters UK. How cool oh, would that Spider's be? Spider is now a Ghostbuster man. Like, <laughs> like Ghostb- Spider, Ghostbusters... Yeah. Spider-Man has... John Link was all 5,000 <laughs> iterations. You know what I mean? Ghostbusters mm-hmm. has three. Like, Ghostbusters Kurt- Japan, dude. That would be awesome. <laughs> And have Scarlett Johansson play uh, the main. <laughs> Why not? Scarlett Johansson plays the Japanese ghost. <laughs> yeah. I'd be up for a straight up horror movie that's Ghostbusters related, where it's not so family friendly and the ghosts are a tad bit more. Mm-hmm. In this one, the ghost cuss. <laughs> Full nudity ghost, folks. Get out of here, bitch Get ghosts. Dude, in two, we got a painting. All right, so you a know, painting. Yeah, yeah uh, we, ego, Vigo. Yeah, we, we we had a painting. That was the big bad. A painting. Oh, that's right. That's right. Vigo cannot be hurt by bullets. Look, and, and there you go. Ghostbusters two. I was I like. I'm a fan of, but many people are like, oh yeah, yeah right. Yeah. We, this is such a great film, classic film from the 80s. Again, Back to the Future can go into the same type of category. Has anyone tried to do it? Yeah, there's been plenty of movies made about, you know, people going back to the past, but not the freaking DeLorean. Yeah, I mean, and it's hard to even try because you auto, your, your influences are automatically on your sleeve. Right, like you can't time travel in any kind of vehicle ever again, really. Right? Otherwise, people are going to see it as satire. Then it's hard to take that seriously. You know what I mean? With something so specific, like a movie like Alien, you can you can remix that a hundred different ways. But mm-hmm. ghost, but blue collar dudes hunting ghosts with proton packs. I mean, 
that would be you will be sued so fast. You know what right. I mean? Like how do you now get... if Larry the cable guy did like Spectre Investigator? There was I supposed could... to be like a uh uh Larry the Cable Guy, like Chris Farley Ghostbusters four, like years ago, but Chris Farley mm-hmm. passed away and it got shut down. Something wow. like that. Like it was this close to being it was like super close to being made. And the whole game was gonna come back together and Harold Ramis was still alive. If we don't get another Ghostbusters movie, I'm fine with that because yep. we have is just fine. And if we do get another Ghostbusters movie, you know what? If it's not good, I'm just going to let it go because, you know, much like, you know, the original trilogy, the originals are so good that it's fine. We get another Frankenstein remake where someone tries to do Mel Brooks and it's like, eh. And the thing is, well, that's the problem with pop with 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 fanboy culture, isn't it? Uh, they can't handle their childhood being destroyed, right? You know that whole thing. They both want it and don't want it I, at the I, same I, time. Yeah. They want what they want, but they don't want it. Yeah. So it's, it's never good enough. You know, it's a limbo. To, uh, they're in uh, their own inception of themselves. Do you have the inception ready to go? Do you have it? That's what, you're, Sa- that's what I'm doing. Oh, awesome. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like <laughs> it. You just you just fed right into my brain. Yeah. Uh I mean, Ghostbusters speaks for itself. It's undefeated in in this random select. Like like it's it's swept. It's it's you know what I'm saying? But Oh, did it? Yeah, it was undefeated. Yeah, everything else got got yeah. steamrolled. Uh, and it has the that. Right amount of Bill Murray in it too. Right amount of Bill Murray. You want to just trigger Brian on your <laughs> No, I'm just Brian. saying I'm just saying that the reason why it's probably steamrolled is because it has Bill Murray in it. So he has Brian uh Brian thumbs up with Brian. It has for me the right amount of Bill Murray. And then you, it's like it, it has Sigourney Weaver in it. So I, you know I love me some Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. Uh, what are your thoughts about Ghostbusters winner? I so um, this is another one of those films I like grew up in. I remember a scene for like twenty bucks. You get both Ghostbusters one and Ghostbusters two, and like an ectoplasm covered uh, thing, along with like um, all the like comic uh, episodes from the TV shows and stuff like that. Um, I I liked it. I like the background of it that pretty much Dan Aykroyd using his own knowledge about the uh, uh, spiritualism universe and the ghost hunting world from his parents and also himself to kind of like splice some like real jargon into the into the uh, movie that I thought was interesting. Um, kind of gives it like its professional flair and also it's not like a movie where the main cast don't are not aware of something and then ghosts appear and they're like, Oh, there's actual ghosts. It's like, no, these are all professors that have been studying paranormal activity. And then they have their first encounter that there's a difference there that I like, where it's not like uh, campers seeing Jason for the first time. It's uh, scientists yeah. who ha- are finally like, we've confirmed that we found this. This is real. And no one's like, we don't believe you. No, it's- but at the end, yeah, Lenny, you know, the church won't comment, but I believe it's a sign from God. And, you know, like they're accepting that, oh, there's ghosts here. A hundred percent. And they do start out in awe of the situation. It's very Jurassic Park, right? They see their first ghost for the same time. They're all open. They're all wide eyed, jaw dropped, right? Because they're in awe of the moment. They see their first ghost. Then it starts becoming normal to them to the to the point where they start just getting acclimated because they're busting so many ghosts in such a short period of time. There's a time skip, but we really don't get how long they were busting ghosts until the whole Zool blow up, right? Was it months? Right. Was it weeks? Was it years? Dude, that burnout looked real. Like It, it looked had, like it had been years, right? Like they've been... Yeah, I'd, I'd say at least a couple of months. At least six, seven months of like seven days a week just like... Non-stop. Like, non-stop. non-stop. Yeah. That, you know, that burnout was real. But up until even up until that point, they were still seen as charlatans. They were still, still seen as thieves because no one, because they, they would go in, bust a ghost, 
there's a smoking proton pack and there's really no evidence right. of what happened. No one else saw it other than people who already think other than the victims who are already seen as crazy. You know what I mean? But it it took up until the the you know, the um containment unit going up to to government, to, you know, police, to common commoners seeing just ghosts run the streets. Like it can't be a mass hallucination, right? You know what I mean? I, I mean because physical I, things are happening, you know. Look. I wish that we were as, you know, vigilant and accepting of a deadly virus cruising around as some people are in movies of ghosts that appear in their town. Well, maybe if the no. virus was dressed up like a 1980s, 19, uh, 1847 coal miner <laughs> chasing people <laughs> down the street, maybe people would get more of an urgency to take it seriously. So, yeah, but, no. you know, and I think that's part of the magic of Ghostbusters is that it's so grounded in reality. <laughs> that that because it, it's like these are New Yorkers and New Yorkers are going to New Yorker, you know, salt of the earth people. But this fantastical thing is just it's it's totally not they're not buying it up until the zero hour. The Ghostbusters are in jail the night before it all, the morning before it all jumps out because they're like these guys are these guys are lying, dude. You know, none of this is real. They've caused some kind of you know what did he call it? Some kind of uh, uh, local hysteria. They said yeah. that they've drawn up from all their ghost Oh, yeah. Well, well, local hysteria and, you know, that they were just spraying drugs on people and then using, like, a light show. and Yeah, a, a, an electronic light show. You caused the explosion. Uh, you know, so it wasn't until the zero hour. And it has this weird, you mentioned Marvel, this weird Marvel thing where Ghostbusters 2, the world knows ghosts are real. You know what I mean? Like, that would change the way we look at things forever. Like the world would be completely different if someone just like, check this out. I'm a, I take a picture with a ghost there for real, for real. You know, it would change the way we, that it would change humankind. But no, it's New York. They don't, you know, taxi. <laughs> take me to 42nd and Broadway. No one cares. <laughs> you know, just life goes on, you know. And I love that blue collar groundedness that makes uh, Ghostbusters a timeless film in its own way. You know what I mean? Do you guys want to do a masterpiece theater? Yeah, let's. Uh, it's time. Wait. It's time. Masterpiece theater. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You're speaking to me. So, for this masterpiece theater, am I talking in the voice of Gozer? Uh huh. no that um so you just read the lines as normal that's just a scene uh um scene narration I don't know why they they uh edited it like that but okay uh, cool. yeah I'll be I'll be um it's probably easier going Brian will play the role of stance and I'll be wearing many faces and I will play the rest of the character Gozer the Gozerian Gozer he looks up and seems to notice the Ghostbusters for the first time. Stance. He busts Ghoster. As a duly constituted representative of the city of New York and on behalf of the county of the state of New York, the United States of America, the planet Earth, and all its inhabitants, I hereby order you to cease and desist any and all supernatural activity and return at once to your place of origin or the next parallel dimension. Well, that ought to do it. (laughs) Gulcher stands up at his full height and regards Stance curiously. Are you a god? No. Then die. He raises his arms and blows away the Ghostbusters with searing bolts of energy. The Ghostbusters, momentarily stunned, they tumble all the way down the stairs and almost fall off the edge of the roof. (sighs) You should have said yes. He might have been willing to negotiate. Vakeman gets to his feet, really mad now. Okay, that's it. I'm going to turn this guy into toast. It's funny that in this script, that's not Winston's line. He ad-libbed that. (laughs) That's crazy. Because his line is, 
when someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this so, is what they just need about the script. You get he ad libbed that. That's yeah. that's brilliant. I didn't hey, know. Hey man, that. sometimes you don't remember your lines, and you just gotta go with it. <laughs> and it's stuff. <laughs> right? It was a good line. It's his best line of the movie. Absolutely. Now, I have a feeling if I am, this is this could be a brilliant thought, but to do that could have. Uh, it's a 50 50 shot of the director going cut cut what the hell was that you read the lines <laughs> the it, depends line. on, it depends on the director man it depends on the director man and that was stanley kubrick he would have not had none of that dude. right like uh, i can see like <laughs> stanley kubrick going, would have had you do it like 150 times to teach you a lesson Hitchcock's going, <laughs> what the hell did you just do if you were a woman that's the thing Wow. And, uh, wow. Dana, wow. Dana, <laughs> Way to besmirch Dana. the name of, of Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> or David Lynch with his like, megaphone on set. You're doing it wrong. He just goes, wrong. <laughs> the megaphone, wrong. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't let Stanley hear that. Don't be happy. Let me see your tears. <laughs> Okay. Like Jack Nicholson needed to write like a three page syllabus on any ad lib he wanted to add to the movie before Stanley <laughs> would even consider it, Doug. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude. I want my character to drink. I want him to lot. drink a lot. <laughs> Jack, can you do that, Jack? Uh, I don't think that's in the script. There's I don't not, think that's a problem, uh, I'm sir. I'm going to drink a lot. As I'm holding a drink right now. Yeah, uh, you're happy I'm keeping the drugs too low. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen King wouldn't mind. Stephen King's like, you, you holding? Um, no, I've already just, written five books. So I've already written talk. eight. <laughs> I've written eight books while you've drunk in front of my face mad genius bro mad genius <laughs> maximum overdrive uh it's time to really get into some hashtag hard cuts guys it's time to talk about this hashtag hard cuts i'm gonna go with our with winter first winter who you got man let's just let's let's call oh, it out oh boy who you got dude? so this is a this is a real hard one, okay, folks, because I do enjoy both of these movies. Um, I mean, Ghostbusters has it. It's got some action. It's got the supernatural, and it's got comedy, and it's got Dan Aykroyd before he became more of Dan Aykroyd. You know, <laughs> Super it, Saiyan Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> yes, this is this is uh, again. It's Dan Aykroyd working with a team of people. <laughs> like Bill Murk, Bill Murky, Bill, Bill Murky. Murky, I like Bill that. Murky working with a team of people, uh, and Sigourney Weaver, uh, Harold Ramis. Uh, who am I missing out here? Uh, Ernie Hudson, Ernie Hudson, and um, the guy that's coming back for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Rick Moranis, Rick Moranis. Yes, all of them together in one movie, together. and then you have Young Frankenstein, where it's paying homage. To the Frankenstein <laughs> film, and it's like using like period based sets, and it's like it's it's having like surprise guest Gene Hackman in it, uh, a bunch of other people. It's fun, but the question still arrives as I've wasted five minutes. Which movie am I going to pick? And uh, it it is a hard one. It's a decision that I do not come to lightly. But if I am going to bust anything, uh, it is going to be a young Frankenstein. Winter's choice. Please don't clip that out. <laughs> I will not. Busting makes him feel good. Um, At least remove the young part. Never. <laughs> It all blends like a it blends like a lemon meringue pie. My man. I can't cut the audio. It, the audio would just get messed up if I edit it. Okay, no, uh, it would ruin the podcast irreparably for years to come. Uh, I can't argue that, man. That's that's pretty pretty straight logic. Uh, Brian, what dog you got in this fight, man? Look, man. Hashtag hard cuts, and I respect everything Winners just said. In fact, as I was thinking about this, Winter was in my brain, and I was like, yeah, the pantheon of comedy films. In my brain. Professor, what would I teach? And honestly, it's a, it's, it's, it's a toss-up, because Ghostbusters is a fantastic comedy. You laugh, but <clears throat> it's not a pure comedy. Mm-hmm. 
Whereas Mel Brooks's young Frankenstein is a pure comedy. And, you know, I wouldn't have called it that till you said it. And then I'm like, no, yeah, you're without doubt. Because with each film, I've seen like, God, this isn't really a pure comedy. We're, we're talking about a comedy knife fight, man. Yep. And all things being considered, in a classroom setting, Young Frankenstein would probably be the the go-to comedic film if I was teaching a comedy class. That said, this is Random Select. And this is about what the best comedy movie is. Mm-hmm. Oh, the class. This is the back alley. People get bloody. Blood. And you know what? Ghostbusters is busting up on Young Frankenstein. Busting. It's not nostalgia, <laughs> folks. It's it's the quotes. It's I'm gonna turn this guy in the toast whenever you you say yes whenever anyone asks you if you're a god. That's on one page, one freaking page, two classic quotes. And it's a funny movie. Nobody steps on a church in my town. I love that scene. Stay Puff Marshmallow. Stay Puff Marshmallow. No, no. This is a back alley fight, man. And, you know, in a classroom setting, you might win. But there ain't no teacher here, bro. Okay. Listen. Ghostbusters wins. Brian, Ghostbusters wins. Listen, guys. What? Listen. Ghostbusters <laughs> wins. No, I'm just kidding. We have Young Frankenstein... No. Uh, winner has Young Frankenstein. Brian has Ghostbusters. It's up to me. I am I am the tiebreaker, which is why uh-huh. random selects are set in three, set with three people, not four, not two, because there has to be a tiebreaker. And it's been documented since we've started this thing and throughout the podcast how much of a Ghostbusters mark I am. Love me some Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters top 10 movies of all time for me top five probably if i'm being honest with myself the real ghostbusters top three cartoons in my entire life top three i had i had the pro i had the the um the ghostbusters jumpsuit with with my last name on the patch i was that kid you know what i mean i had my i had my egon spangler i had the ecto one with a with a freaking ecto cooler in one hand <laughs> and a freaking slimer pie in the other dude uh, we, slimer pie i wonder how much those are on ebay <laughs> dude money and they're probably gross as sin dude <laughs> dude i can't even imagine from the 80s doug that thing will literally turn you into a ghost bro <laughs> you know what i mean so that being said there's been one thing that brian has been yelling at me throughout this entire random select is that this is not a random select against movies. This is a random select against comedies. Which is the better comedy, not the better movie. And as for how much I love Ghostbusters, is how much I love the world, the, the lines, the, the comedic, the timing, comedic in action. Young Frankenstein is the better comedy. Ghostbusters is the better movie. It's way better, in my opinion. It's the better movie. But we're not ranking just movies on there, just on the merit of being a movie. We're ranking comedies. And Young Frankenstein surprised me to the point where it's it's won my vote. It's going to be Young Frankenstein. As much as I love Ghostbusters as a film, comedy-wise, I laughed way more watching Young Frankenstein. And that's, that's saying something to power through nostalgia, Right. Are you are you playing me off <laughs> like 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 on the Oscars? <laughs> uh, but all all that to say, it's it's Young Frankenstein, man. Ghostbusters would win almost any other uh, category, but for raw comedy, Young Frankenstein had me laughing, like I saw it for the first time, powering through nostalgia. Where Ghostbusters is the full boat. Ghostbusters is comedy, is action, is science fiction. You know what I mean? It's 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 so it's 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 uncharacteristic. It's hard to categorize that movie because it's not a pure comedy, but Young Frankenstein is, and it's a damn well good one. So, 
the winner of the 2020 comedy edition of Random Select goes to Mel Brooks' own 1974 Young Frankenstein. What do you What are you guys' thoughts about this whole thing? Well, it's been a long time coming, right? It's been a couple of weeks, and uh, it's been a lot of hard-fought battles. But we clearly have a winner now, I guess, on the top of the list. Brian, what are your thoughts right now? How are you feeling? I mean, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect response. Oh, my God. That's fine. Whatever. Whatever, dude. Folks, <laughs> hashtag hard cuts. Eight, if you have eight films, comedic films, Young Frankenstein should be there. That's for certain. That's and don't all the films on this list are great in their own way outside of Austin Powers maybe, but all the films on this list are are next level, dude. All of them, they're all great, uh, genre bending, genre defining films, and that's why we call it hashtag hard cuts. Man, hashtag hard cuts. I would never not be. I would never not tire of doing this. Of doing this uh, yeah. series, I love it. Every year we plan it around something, right? It's Usually, rough. It's rough, it's and rough. it's but it's fun, dude. To have these discussions. I'd, not in a million years would I have ever thought Young Frankenstein. I'd even be putting in the same conversation with the Ghostbusters. But when you're talking comedies, man, you have to. And when you're talking random select, we didn't choose these movies. These movies chose us. These were <laughs> randomly chose us. they chose us, dude. We yeah. didn't say, okay, I was ex- remember during the draft, I screamed when Ghostbusters came up because it's one of my favorite movies. I yelped. But and when you're comparing comedy to comedy, Young Frankenstein deserves the win. It's just a strong comedy. Where Ghostbusters is just is a very strong movie, you know, overall. But in a, it, but it for it to be funnier would throw off its balance and make it a worse movie. Would you guys agree with that? If you injected more jokes into Ghostbusters, it would make it a worse movie. Right. That balance makes it perfect. I mean, I a lot of folks don't like Ghostbusters too, man, and I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, but, yeah, like like Ghostbusters is one of those movies that that threads the needle just for everybody, but you know. When we're talking comedies, the comedic genius of Mel Brooks. It's hard hard to beat, man. Pure comedy-wise, I can only think of like a handful of comedies. Maybe Caddyshack. I don't know. Maybe The Jerk. You know what I'm saying? Where like can stand up against Mel Brooks in his prime. You know? That might be next year's random select. You never know. You never know, guys. Um... We get so, through enough. We definitely gonna have to have a champions battle. Once we get eight, dude. Once we do eight once random we selects, eight, we gotta do a tournament of champions, dude. Absolutely, man. It's gonna <laughs> random be great. select tournament of champions, dude. If we random to watch and saw again, <laughs> dude. Anyway, I'm looking forward to watching. Um, uh, dang, we didn't finish one of those. One of them got destroyed by by the troubles. Ah, oh, so with that. Uh, before we go, I definitely wanted to say thank you, everyone who stuck around and listened to this this uh, podcast series that we've created. You stuck around with us. You've listened to every round. You voted on M Nerdiverse Twitter for your choice of which movie should win. I just want to thank all of you for listening and participating in this journey that we do every single that we do every single year. It's all, it's the best time of year. We we try to pick and choose the best times to do a random select. And during this whole earthly trouble, what better time than now to just watch some good movies and laugh? You yeah, it's I mean? been a been a nice distraction, that's for sure. So thanks for involving me and having me. That's great. Absolutely, absolutely. So with that, uh, come comes with this. It's in recording this episode. I was very excited because finals are always great. The final of anything is always great. And that being said, this is not only the final episode for this year's Random Select. This is the final episode for One Trash Monk the Third. Talk to the Nerdiverse, man. What's going on? 
So this is Trash Monk the Third speaking to all of the Nerdiversians out there, all those out there in Masters of the Nerdiverse land. That uh, is my regret to say that this is uh, my final sign off for uh, Masters of the Nerdiverse. Uh, two and a half years ago, uh, I was a simple man addicted to cocaine and heroin. <laughs> And he was uh, looking for any podcast to sell myself to. And eventually I I stumbled across this Reddit stream or this Reddit thing that I never, I didn't even have a Reddit account, but I saw that this (laughs) this guy was looking for a host. So I created an account and I said, I'd be down. And then that led us to, I think using uh, um, uh, Skype for the first time, maybe Mm -hmm. to record and just going down the road there and you offer me uh, a spot uh, as a part of the central quadrant of the master of the nerdiverse and we moved on from there it is uh, unfortunate now that as time progresses uh, commitments have changed now i have uh, commitments in regards to personal life with uh, before i was doing this i was uh, still i was still in seminary but now after I am now uh, full time in the ministry and that has taken a lot of my time. And also it is time for uh, new beginnings where because of this podcast, I've been able, uh, people have uh, reached out to me where sometime next year, there's a possibility of uh, me recording bands that come into the area and posting them on our local radio show. So this, uh, this uh, podcast has, has uh has uh, introduced me to both uh, new opportunities in the future as well as new people that I will cherish and I'll remember back like remember when I we said that crazy thing on the podcast and how it's ruined any aspirations of a political career mm-hmm. uh barely any like religious career <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh I'm talking to you Austin Brant <laughs> Brian <laughs> Brian you haven't said anything that bad <laughs> <laughs> Not, but there's a, there's a whole lot of show left no i'm just kidding but yeah. yes so uh with that mike I, I i am thankful that you uh you uh decided to check uh take a chance on a random person on reddit and i'm happy that i didn't turn out to be like a craigslist craigslist killer or anything like that yeah and uh full disclosure i've never met winner i've never shaken his hand i've never you know we live on two different yeah. sides of the state you know what i mean that being said, this is not the end of our friendship. This is not right. the end of our um, our communications. And to be honest, this is not the last you'll hear of Winter Trash Month the Third on this channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, for June, we have plenty of winter themed content that is still ready to be put onto the channel. Um, next there week, is? I, yes, one hundred percent. Okay, is, I, I've been planning for. I've been, I've been like a squirrel, put uh, you know, gathering my nuts. Um, we have a lost episode that was never aired of random of MLT of master universe. That'll be going up. Me and winter did top 10 X files episodes. You know what I mean? There, there's going to be more with the content go. past this. So you, you, let me, what, you know, can I, let me play my funeral song and then I will uh, sign off for the last time. <laughs> All right. With that, um, before we do that, Brian, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me over at Wash's Shop on eBay and Brian J. Wash on Twitter. And uh, Winner, it's been great. Thanks for involving me in your guys' podcast. It's always a pleasure. No problem. Check out his uh, – I looked at your shop, and I'm very interested. I'm looking at the pins that you got. Oh, I have a ton of them that <laughs> aren't even listed yet. So thank you. Uh, and with that – you can always find this channel on at uh, Master Nerdiverse uh, Cast dot com, where you can find all of our backlogged episodes, winners first episode, and future winners last episode. Um, you can always find us on Twitter, which is at M Nerdiverse. Uh, just for the channel itself, there are plenty. There are a lot of good content on the horizon. The channel's never been as as big as it ever as it ever been. We're about to hit twenty one hundred followers. Uh, about se- about seven thousand downloads. The sites were growing, man. It's it's growing. And that would, none of that would be possible without winter. 
uh, Trash Monk the Thizzard. Um, and uh, I'll leave I'll leave it to Winter to to close us out. Yes, folks, it has been a pleasure, countrymen. It has been an honor, women. I'm still single, folks. Winter is single, ladies. This has been Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk. I I I. That's Trash Monk. I I. Yeah. Signing off. Let's go.